Husselberg. This podcast is all about small business in St. Petersburg, Florida, how the business owners got started, how they built their business, and how they serve our community. I'm Brett Bittner, and I'm the host of Husselberg, and I started Beyond Your Side Hustle, a marketing firm where we help budding entrepreneurs go beyond their side hustles and ditch their nine to fives. As the founder of a small business here in St. Pete myself, I love meeting and talking with fellow small business owners. Lucky for you, I also like to record those conversations for you to listen to. If you find anything of value in this episode, I encourage you to subscribe to the podcast because there are probably more nuggets in other episodes, both past and upcoming. It would also be great if you rate and review the episode to let us know what you got out of the conversation. If you have a question about marketing, building your brand, or operating your small business that you'd like to have answered on a Q&A episode, please visit beyondyoursidehustle.com slash podcast question to submit it. Before we begin this Q&A episode, episode 12 of Hustleberg, I want to thank the Hustleberg community for responding. Uh, I had a request for questions specific to uh, social media platforms uh, this week and in two weeks. Uh, episodes 12 and 14 are going to be devoted to Facebook. Uh, looks like episode number 16 and possibly 18 are going to be about Instagram. Uh, we're going to be looking at Twitter after that. Uh, we're also going to be looking at YouTube and TikTok. Um, I asked for people to submit platform-specific questions, and I was not disappointed uh, in the Hustleberg community. I think we ended up with uh, nearly a dozen. Uh, some of them were similar, um, but uh, I think that for the Facebook, uh, we ended up at nearly a dozen, and uh, I am very much looking forward to the questions that you have for the other platforms as well, the other social media platforms. Uh, if you do have a question, please do go to beyondyoursidehustle.com slash podcast question and uh, share your question with us there. And we'll make sure um, when it is appropriate uh, on that episode for the social media platform that you're asking about that we have an answer for you. If it is a very um, out there social media platform or a not one that we could devote an entire episode, we'll probably collect all those together at the end. So I want to thank you guys so much uh, for submitting your questions and uh, let's get to answering them. This question is from William and uh, I'm going to use the beginning of it to kind of discuss a little bit about why this series when it comes to the Q&A episodes is happening. So uh, William asks, with the coronavirus keeping a lot of people at home, uh, is it more important than ever to grow a business online and how should one do that using Facebook? Um, so William, um, one of the reasons that we are doing this uh, the, the series where we go from specific social media platform to social media platform, uh, we're going to have two episodes, uh, on Facebook, uh, both episode 12 and episode 14 in two weeks. Um, this is an opportunity for you to do a lot of the groundwork as you are staying home. Um, lots of people are working remotely. They have a little more free time or they may not be working at all, especially if you're in the service industry. Um, I want to thank you guys for being safe, being responsible, uh, practicing the social distancing that we've all been talking about as we look to flatten the curve uh, to handle uh, COVID-19. Um, the thing that you need to be thinking about right now is getting the groundwork, laying the groundwork for building your brand online. And we've talked about in previous episodes of the podcast that uh, Facebook is by far the one single most important social media platform that there is because people are looking to that uh, as a sign of legitimacy uh, almost as much as they are a website. Um, they are looking for information about you and having a presence uh, even if it is just filling out a page and having a few fans and having the bare minimum of content there, um, they want to be able to see that this is something that is legit. They want to be able to find you online. They want to be able to find out your hours. They want to find out your location. And so uh, when you have the spare time, hopefully, um, with the time that we're spending at home where we are not going out to the beaches, we're not going uh, to concerts, um, we're seeing more and more things close, uh, we no longer have a lot of the distractions at home that prevent us from doing a lot of this 
work. Uh, we no longer have sports to distract us. I think dog sledding, the Iditarod, is the only uh, sport that's really actively happening that hasn't been postponed or suspended. So you have the opportunity here to make the best use of your time, make the best use of this uh, downtime, maximize it um, by starting to build that brand. This is a great way to also interact and engage with your customers if you've already done it. Um, it may be that this is the time that you start a Facebook group. It may be that this is a time where you spend a lot of time uh, working in your local groups, in your small business groups, in your industry-specific groups, interacting with others and engaging with others uh, to help establish you as an authority in what it is that you bring to market. So the way that you would start right now on Facebook, if you don't have a Facebook page, that is by far the very first thing uh, that I would do. And it looks like we're going to have a couple more questions that are going to help you out uh, on that journey, uh, both in the rest of this episode, episode 12, and in two weeks in episode 14, both of which are focused on how you can utilize Facebook to grow or build your business. This question comes from the Hustleberg community from Amy. I, I love using Facebook to promote my business, but with everything that's going on recently, uh, sometimes I need a little break from seeing the constant news cycle, especially about COVID-19, AKA the coronavirus. Uh, what do you recommend for when you just want to unplug and think of happy or educational or fun things? Uh, I feel bad and like I'm not putting my business first by taking that break. Uh, first, if you just need a break from the onslaught of news about COVID-19, the 2020 election, or whatever it is that has you feeling this way, step back from your laptop or the platforms or the apps on your phone that you're using. Take a literal break. Uh, go for a walk around the block. Uh, call your mom. She says you don't do that enough anyway. Uh, play or snuggle with your dog or cat or whatever pet is in your home because they are also saying that you don't do that enough with them. Uh, next, I would say that just turn off notifications on your phone for a while. Only enable the ones that you absolutely must have on. Uh, for the iPhone, if you're an iPhone user, you can enable bedtime, uh, which is a feature in settings to take a break or in the clock. And many Android phones have something called Zen Mode, where you can't do anything on them except receive calls for a specified time so that you can disconnect. Um, and use that opportunity to pick up a book or your Kindle uh, and read for fun for a little bit. I've taken to trying to meditate more. Uh, even though I use an app on my phone to do so, I get to relax and tune out the world around me for 5, 10, or 20 minutes and just focus inward or on happiness or my relationships with other people. You have an opportunity. No one is expecting that you're going to be on all the time, that you're going to be online all the time, and that it isn't going to be something that does kind of drive you away. Now, I have some great news. Now, when it comes to improving your online experience, you actually find what you seek online. The algorithms are designed to give you what they calculate that you want to see. If you interact with political posts, they'll show you politics. If you engage with stories about kindness, you're going to see more of those. The other day, I was listening to a podcast uh, that was an interview with the CEO of Instagram, Adam Mosseri, who previously designed the newsfeed for Facebook. And he confirmed that they really try to tailor what you see online with what you engage with. And the good news is you truly design your own online experience. The best part of that is that your most recent activity holds greater weight than your older activity. So the best time to change your online behavior, to change what you see, is now. Engage with the people and groups and pages who make you the happiest. Uh, don't engage with those that are kind of dragging you down. Click on the links of the pages that offer you the greatest value. Disengaging with the people, pages, and groups that don't. And you're going to see a huge change in what's presented to you inside of a week, guaranteed. Uh, by Taking control over what it is that you see online and who you interact with, you're actually going to see a complete shift in what's presented to you in whatever feed for whatever social media platform it is that's got you down. I remember a period of time when I worked in the nonprofit political world where everything in my feed was political stuff. 
now that's really not the case. I unfollowed several pages. Um, I got out of a lot of groups. I no longer interact with as regularly a lot of the same people that I did in that world. And it has completely changed the way uh, social media is presented to me. It's very rare that I see a political post uh, that isn't strictly news. Um, there's no political opinion that's in there. So you really can uh, switch this on and off, almost like a light switch or a really fast dimmer. Uh, so if you are discouraged about what it is that you're seeing, whether we're talking about things about the upcoming uh, 2020 elections uh, or we are talking about uh, COVID-19 or whatever it is that just has you down, you can change what's out there just by uh, fine-tuning who it is that you have that is even allowed to put things in your feed and who you engage with among those that do have that permission. This question comes from Allison and she asks, I know businesses use pages, but also sometimes create groups as well. What are the benefits of creating a group in addition to your business page? Allison, I want to thank you very much for asking this question. When it comes to Facebook, you have a lot of options uh, when it comes to communicating your brand and um, reaching out and creating a community around your business. Uh, previously, we have noted the distinction between a personal profile and a business page. And a lot of what we talked about uh, in the past and will continue to talk about is going to be your business page. Uh, we talked about that as being a communication tool to those who are outside your community. It's kind of like a digital storefront. It has the basic information about your businesses, uh, about your hours, your location, any special deals you might have, and it is a great tool for people that are looking for you already. Uh, it's kind of social media's version of your website that allows you to have a touch of your personality. Now, we've talked about utilizing your page in the past to share um, kind of the five, the, the five focus uh, items, the five groups of ideas, the five things uh, where you add value, and your page is definitely going to be a part of that. Now, when you ask about groups, groups present you with a unique way to build deeper relationships with your community. These aren't going to be the people who are just passers-by. It's going to be where you're going to have in-depth discussions. It's going to be where you're going to generate and foster engagement uh, with the people that are already associated with and becoming fans of your brand or your business. Uh, your page is an opportunity to build many shallow connections. Think uh, about as deep as a bathtub, um, but your group gives you the chance to build ocean deep connections with people who are committed to your business. They are going to be your raving fans, or they're going to become your raving fans. Now, groups offer a place for you to really let your personality show online. We've talked about the five basic areas where you're going to be sharing content, and briefly, those are the main thrust of your business, two related areas, and then two things that are personal to you or to the business, um, you know, that are not necessarily... Uh, business related, uh, they are there to show that you have a personality and you're not just a robot. Um, and groups are going to be a place that really let your personality show online. You can get to know your customers and connect with them there and you can truly connect with them. It isn't just a post on your page and maybe a comment here and back and forth and that's about it. Um, the relationships you build here are going to give you a tribe of people who will evangelize for you online as well as in the real world. They are going to be your best marketers. They are going to be way better marketers than you are uh, because they are going to give others a real world example of how your business solved their problem and can solve others' problems. They will enthusiastically recommend you to others and they will devote themselves to you and your brand because you have made these ocean deep connections um, and it won't take very many ocean deep connections to really have some true raving fans who will be fantastic marketers, word of mouth for your business.
The next question that we have is about online reviews specifically for Facebook. Uh, and that question comes from Katie. What is the best way to get people to leave five star reviews with comments on your Facebook page? And uh, she also adds, other than providing a five star service, of course. Now, while this question is specific to Facebook and having reviews left on your Facebook page, uh, a lot of what I'm about to tell you from a 30,000 foot view, theoretical view, uh, will also help to uh, boost your other online reviews as well, uh, whether we're talking Yelp or uh, Home Advisor um, or uh, Google Reviews, something like that. It's one of those services. Um, online reviews are a great way for people to find out about you and they can actually be a great uh, marketing service for you. Now, when you provide a terrific service, it is actually pretty hard to get people to leave reviews uh, saying that you did a great job. It's We've all been in a restaurant where the meal was exactly as expected and there were absolutely no problems and we certainly aren't flagging the manager over to let them know, yes, this was exactly what I expected to have for dinner tonight. It was cooked just to the right temperature. The server was uh, terrific. Uh, you're not really going to have those type of interactions um, where you are getting that type of feedback uh, without soliciting it. Um, generally what we see uh, when it comes to reviews is that you are uh, leaving them when the food is cold, uh, the server forgot you, you know something, something took way too long, uh, you're bringing them over to discuss a problem. Uh, so five-star service is not, ne not enough um, to get people to leave reviews. But I do have to say that giving five-star service and going beyond what is expected is definitely the best way to earn those reviews, those five-star reviews, whether we're talking about Facebook on your Facebook page, uh, whether we're talking about on Yelp or uh, Google Reviews, um, or if we're talking about um, a service like HomeAdvisor. Uh, giving five-star service is definitely the best way. Now, you can ask for feedback. Um, you can offer on a receipt or signage in store or a follow-up communication, a small token of appreciation for reviews, uh, but really you should be asking directly, engaging with your customers, not in the flyby, oh hey, how is everything tonight, kind of a way that we see managers walk around a restaurant, um, but more asking them specifically about the feedback of the interaction that they've had and addressing any issues that they bring up on the spot. And no matter what they share with you, ask them to share it online. And if it is your Facebook page that you want to drive them to leave, where you want to drive them to leave that review, do it there. If it's Google, if it's Yelp, if it's HomeAdvisor or Angie's List or something like that, then direct them there. The key, though, is engaging them while the interaction is still in your mind, um, engaging them while you have their uh, attention and making sure that you are listening and addressing anything straight away, um, making sure that you are leaving them with a very positive impression. Uh, you're going to need to ask them for their honest feedback. And again, make sure you address any shortcomings that are noted in constructive feedback, um, whether it is in person or in a less than five star review online. And believe it or not, it isn't just five stars that your prospective customers wish to see, because let's be honest, if all we saw were five stars, things kind of look a little fishy. They want to know before they go that if they have an issue, you're attentive to it and you're responsive to it. You'll also want to reply to literally every review you get online. You're going to want to thank those who uh, came to your business. You want to thank those that you wowed and gave you a great compliment in sharing their five-star experience. And for those that don't give five stars, you need to show true concern and attention uh, to those who offer their feedback when they haven't received it. And you want to make sure that you are making things right publicly on that review. And some of your best customers will be those that you fix the problem for or someone who has seen that you fixed a problem for someone else. Hey, you did it. You've just listened to Hustleberg. To thank you for listening, we have a free guide to help you get started marketing your business online, aptly named our Getting Started Guide, available at beyondyoursidehustle.com slash get the guide. See how to begin with the first three things you should be doing for your business. Speaking of businesses, if you're a small business owner in St. Pete 
and you'd like to be a guest on an episode of the podcast, please let us know at beyondyoursidehustle.com slash podcast guest. If you got something of value from this episode, please take a moment to subscribe, rate, and review on your favorite podcast app. This is something small that you can do to help us shine the spotlight on all the great businesses St. Pete has to offer. The music in this episode is Defining Your Dreams by my friend Rhymer Educator. You can listen to his latest single, The Last One, on Spotify, iTunes, or wherever you listen to great music. Thanks so much for listening, and we look forward to sharing with you how we do business in the Berg.